Corona, tail on the tape. Corona who invites you to find your beach. There you see that Colazzo is eight years older than Juan Brian Perella, but Caleb, the height advantage is in the favor of Perella. Absolutely, Brian, another um, young, hungry uh, prospect at this point on his way to be a contender. He's uh, fast, explosive, he's got good boxing ring, uh, generalship and IQ, but the thing about Colazzo is he's got one punch knockout power with both hands, so uh, Brian Perella's definitely got to be careful. Ladies and gentlemen, live on FS2 from NYCB Live. Premier Boxing Champions now features 10 rounds in the welterweight division. Introducing first fighting out of the red corner, he comes in wearing the purple with the silver. His professional record, 15 wins, 13 of those coming by way of knockout against one blemish. Fighting out of Fort Myers, Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Bryant Goodfellow Parella. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. He comes in wearing the navy, gold, and the white. As a professional, his record includes 37 wins, 20 of those by way of knockout against seven losses. Fighting out of Brooklyn, New York. He is the former champion, Luis Colazzo. Second, Lou. August. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Louie. Good evening, Brian. We went over the rules in the locker room. I want a good, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. This is good. This is good. Let's keep your punches up. Touch gloves. Good luck to both of you. Good luck, seconds. It's our next matchup here, Luis Colazzo who's been away from the ring since February of 2017. We will get into that with our own Jordan Harney in moments. But he's taking on that man, Brian Goodfellow Perella. Perella coming off a win back in December of last year over Alex Martin. As you see that both are southpaws, and that's something that is a rarity in boxing, Caleb. Absolutely, something you don't see very often, but um, at the end of the day, especially like two right-handers fighting each other, so. I don't know how uncomfortable it'll make him. Luis Colazzo won the world title back in April of 2005 in Worcester, Massachusetts. Just to show you how long Colazzo's been around, he actually defended it and lost it to Ricky Hatton back in May of 2006. Also fought Keith Thurman back in July of 2015. That was down in Tampa, Florida. Lost by seventh round stoppage, did Colazzo, but Colazzo pumping out his jab. Colazzo feels that he still has quite a bit left in the tank and can make one more run at a world title. Brian Perella using that left hook to the body early. Trying to invest in some body work, trying to slow down, wear down Colazzo. Nice right hook connecting by Brian Perella. It's a fight that certainly a lot of people have the hardcore fight fans really are interested in this matchup because Perella's 15 and 1 with 13 knockouts. You know how crafty and how durable Luis Colazzo is as well. Actually, his last out in February of last year put out Sammy Vasquez Jr. Youth definitely on a uh Perella's side, but even if he's able to pull away and you know start boxing Colazzo well, he's gonna have to be on point at all times because um, Colazzo he can put people to sleep at any point. And Colazzo's very dangerous. A straight left hand for Colazzo. They both exchange hooks. Nice right hook by Colazzo backing up Perella. And Colazzo's confidence is starting to grow as Perella goes backwards. Now he steps in with the right uppercut. Another good left hook, right hook to the body by Perella. Colazzo's trying to walk him down, but as he does that, Perella's stepping to his side a little bit and throwing that check right hook. Definitely taller, longer guy like Perella. You know the shorter guy, Colazzo's going to have to step to you. And he does have to set up the check hook for you to circle out, move back to the center of the big part of the ring and start over. And Perella placing that jab right in the face of Colazzo. Colazzo coming right back. The action heating up here in round one. Colazzo coming forward. 
good exchanges that we've been seeing between the two. Not really much of a feeling out process. Little swelling. And round one is in the books. The action picking up. Brian Perella, Luis Galazzo mixing it up. You're watching PBC on FS2. Welcome back to PBC on FS2. The last time that we saw Colazzo in the ring was a year and six months ago when he had an amazing knockout over Sammy Vasquez. And he hasn't fought since, but that wasn't by choice. He suffered a torn bicep in his left arm during training after the Vasquez fight. And he said he just threw a punch and it popped. He admitted it's from wear and tear of the body because, guys, let's not forget, he's been a pro since 2000. He said the rehab process took eight months and he was scheduled to come back in April, but things got pushed back. But he's very excited to return to the ring tonight. Guys. Thank you very much, Short Wall. Caleb, as you get older, it takes a little while longer for your body to heal. You don't have to deal with that, but guys like me and guys like Luis Galazzo, it certainly has to happen because, I mean, that is just raw genetics. Yeah, absolutely. For all the time, nobody's in the Younger guys, it's just known they heal quicker, they, they uh, can bounce back easier from injuries um, as you get older. There's, those things, that process just takes a little bit longer. So uh, it's good to have him back. Glad that he's healthy and 100%. And, uh, you know, he's game tonight. He's coming forward. He's throwing a lot of punches. He's, uh, he's keeping Brian Perella on his toes. Perella using his jab. And he's trying to keep Colazzo at bay. But Colazzo does a very good job to cut off the ring as well. Absolutely. That's uh, something you don't see as much these days. A lot of people, they got problems with cutting off the ring. And um, whether you're a boxer and you like to stick and move or or whether you uh, are a come forward fighter. I feel like every guy needs to, to, needs to know how to cut the ring off. Well, the only time that one Brian Perello lost was back, you would have to go and find his loss to your Dennis Ugas, and that is nothing to frown upon whatsoever as Ugas started beating undefeated fighters and is becoming and emerged as in the top 10 of the welterweight division. So, Perello was hurt in that fight, and we will get into that story later on with Jordan Harding. But for Perella, one loss isn't the worst thing in the world, and this is a big opportunity for him here this night. Colazzo with the right hook to the body. And you see how Colazzo steps in with his right and his left foot, trying to get and stop Perella from gaining that cover real estate. Second ago, that was a good couple of jabs by Brian Perella, though, two or three. Landed right on the forehead, uh, racking back Colazzo's head. He's got to, you know, even if they don't hurt, he needs to step out of the way, try to slick those. Perella knows he's in there with a KG veteran. And Luis Colazzo, right hook, smacking off the side of the head of Colazzo. Colazzo eating some jabs as Perella will tie up as we near the end of round number two. Nice right hook that found its mark. And that is the end of the second. Brian Perella picking up his volume of punches. Look at those jabs. Colazzo eating them. And then the right as Brian Perella having success. You're watching PBC on FS2. Welcome back to PBC on FS2. There you see Brian Perella, who is 29 years of age, with a big opportunity here. He is a six-year pro, is the man known as the good fella. Actually dons a makeshift tuxedo, as you saw in the introductions, before every single fight as a part of his ring attire. So Brian Perella certainly has his own style. Perella with that jab. Lazo jabbing in as well. Seems as if Palazzo's really trying to cut the ring off and walk uh, Brian down. I'm not sure if he's felt his power or feels like he has and isn't worried about it, but he's really got his phone to gas. He's taking some shots on the way in, but I wonder if uh, it's a long-term game plan to wear Brian down. Maybe trying to take him out. Looks to the body by Luis Palazzo as a minute has elapsed here in the third. 
But Perella answers back with a straight left, followed by a right uppercut of his own. And Perella hammered away on the body of Colazzo. Freak, no punch. Tying up. Seems as if Ron is slightly starting to feel the presence pressure of uh, Colazzo. He may not be throwing punches every second, but he's always, always right up on him, always cutting the ring off, always stepping forward, and just the presence of someone always being right up on you and you know, you know, close to you on the inside that, that can wear you down mentally. Once you wear down mentally, it's easy to get worn down physically. So. 70 seconds remaining in the third. Colazzo, as you pointed out, it is mental pressure. He has this relentless mindset and this very strong will to pick straight left that connected. Something is up. He looks like a knock to his nose. Part of the ring dressing, but Colazzo's teeing up the power. And Perella goes back with big right left that connected for the 18 year battle. As Perella remains in the pocket, but Colazzo is able to clean out the kitchen. Take big straight left that on its mark. Hearing the cheers from the fans here in New York. And if uh, Perella thinks this is going to slow down anytime soon, he, he's wrong. Sadly to be mistaken, because this is Luis Colazzo. Plenty of high volume, high octane action. He just can kick it into a second and third gear. It's that old adage, pressure burst pipes. And Colazzo with this pressure believes he is going to burst the bubble of Brian Perella. Yeah, and not only that, but Perella started to suck into too. But now it appears as if there is a laceration outside the right eye of Colazzo. Round three is in the books. Both men going back and forth as Colazzo and Perella really mixing it up. You're watching PBC on FS2. success with the high level of pressure and he's starting off strong again you heard the crowd earlier towards the tail end of the third round Caleb chant Louie 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 they believe in the 37 year old and he feels like this 37 that he has found that fountain of youth and can go for a few more years absolutely he's you know great display of uh, pressure tonight it's the same thing that Porky Medina tried to do to me. You know, that's what Porky Medina does. He tries to put presence pressure on you. He tries to wear you down with exchanges. And one thing Rod's not going to be able to do is let him touch him. Because fighters like Porky Medina, fighters like Colazzo, they build momentum off that. The more they touch you, whether it's your hips, your arms, your, your shoulders, or your head, body, whatever, they're going to build momentum and just continue to pick up the pace. He's going to have to move his feet a little, a little more. He's going to have to use his stance, use his jab, his jab to the body, try to slow the pace down get it back where he wants it. Otherwise, you know, we're just going to see more of the same. Well, what we're starting to see out of Brian Perella, Caleb, is I'm seeing more arm punches. He isn't sitting down on his shots. Could that be because of the pressure and how Luis Colazzo was trying to rub him up? Absolutely. You could be getting through out of game plan and not that he turned his punches over because, because of what you said, or it could be he, he's trying to conserve energy. Um, you know, it could be a multitude of things right now, but uh, it definitely looks like he's... Midway point of round four as Luis Colazzo continues with this reckless abandon. Big left hand on the temple. It's in the rock pro. The referee will separate down, but that left on the temple caught the attention of Perella. And look at Colazzo cut off the ring. He's ducking underneath there. These slight fades as well. Right hook to the body. He's really showing every bit of those 17 years of professional experience. 
Stop that by Colazzo. One thing Brian's doing too is seems as if he's only moving one way. He's only moving to his right. By Colazzo. Colazzo is getting hooks. And they are landing flush on Perella. And while he's doing that, he's keeping his head in the center as he's punching. When he's punching, his head is staying right in the middle for Colazzo to come right back with big combinations and big punches. He's going to have to keep his head out of the center while he's punching. And more chance of Louis here in Long Island, New York as the fans loving what they're seeing out of the Brooklyn native. Good check hook by Brian. Perella has to realize he is in an opponent's backyard, and this is certainly an away game, and he has some hostile territory to deal with, along with an unhospitable guest in one, Luis Colazzo. Colazzo throwing shots to the body, hammering away on Brian Perella. Tail end of round four. Keep him up, Keep him up. And Luis Colazzo really throwing as much as he can towards Brian Perella. Look at these shots now. Straight left that connected. Wobbly Perella. And there's that another straight left on the temple as Colazzo coming forward, showing his aggression. You're watching PBC. Welcome back to PBC on FS2. Prior to Perella's last fight, he was out of the ring for 15 months after losing to welterweight contender Jordanis Ugas. That's because going into the Ugas fight, he was basically fighting off of one leg because a bone was growing in his right thigh area. It's a condition called myositis occipicans, which a bone grows in soft muscle tissue. It was due to a sparring session with the heavyweight who accidentally punched him in the thigh, but Perella said it's completely healed and his trainer added moving forward, they will not fight if they have any injuries. Ray? Okay, well, that's a smart move for Brian Perella, baby, because that loss went ahead and that snapped his undefeated streak. Absolutely. You know, people who are full-time fighters, they don't have a regular job. This is the, you know, what keeps the lights on, what keeps the food in the house, mouth fed. Uh, you got to take it serious. And if you have any nicks or bruises or, you know, something that's serious, it's probably better to just take your time, you know, he'll recover and come back because when you force things, as you, you know, Brian found out the hard way, sometimes it can mean a loss. Well, let's take a look at how you have the fight scored thus far. Caleb, you have Luis Galazzo at 39-37. Yeah, uh, Brian came out, you know, he was staying long, using his jab, I, I edged it out to him. But ever since then, Galazzo has been stepping to him, cutting the ring off and, uh, Taking control of these rounds, being the ring general, dictating the pace. Palazzo unloading on the body of Brian Perella, and Perella still has yet to find an answer for Palazzo. Perella matching him with his jab, that was a straight left that connected, but look at Palazzo with this non stop aggression, and he does not stop. One thing I haven't seen from Brian, I don't think one time is a thing. If someone who's taller, longer, who's going to want to box on the outside and keep the pace slow, that's something they're going to have to learn to do is the same jab to the body, you know, be a little faster on his feet. Instead of catching punches with a high guard, maybe move his head more and make him miss completely, which would tire out a guy like, you know, Colazzo. When people miss punches, that makes you tired. Well, what, sta what stands out about Luis Colazzo, Caleb, is he's never on the line. And what that means is that he's always moving his head. He's never coming in a straightforward line that makes him an easier target to connect upon, which may be why Brian Perel is having so many issues. Absolutely, but even if he, you know, doesn't want to punch him on the way in, if he would just faint, you know, that may freeze, may freeze Colazzo. I would set up some of his own shots. When someone faints at you, you know, as we all know, it can freeze him. It may open up some opportunities. Perella looking to spin around Colazzo, but Colazzo still coming in with his jab, followed by a hook and an uppercut there as Perella goes backwards. Straight and left connecting. At the end of the day, boxing is just a you know, a test of will, who wants to impose their will on the other person, whether it's boxing or fighting. Right now, Palazzo, he's definitely imposing his will. And that is the end of the round. We'll come back with more PBC on FS2. Welcome back to PBC on FS2. Luis Calazzo, bang, look at that uppercut landing, smacking the nose of Brian Perella. Absolutely, like I said before we went to break. Colossus is definitely imposing his will on Brian. He's going to, Brian, uh, the second half of this fight, he's going to have to rally. You know, he's going to have to get motivated. He's going to have to start moving his feet, fainting. Um, 
and maybe hit him with some big shots that makes Colazzo think, think twice before he just comes rushing in. And after being away from the ring for almost 18 months, you think that Luis Colazzo would show signs of ring rust. That is not to be the case. In the last four years, Colazzo has only fought three times. Colazzo still coming forward. Brian Brown is going to be able to switch the momentum of this fight because he is clearly behind. And Colazzo stalking him still is not allowing him to breathe much. That present pressure, presence pressure, it, it, uh, it breaks the guys down mentally. And, you know, once you get that wore down mentally, it's very easy to get wore down physically. Um, if he would just faint, maybe move his feet a little faster and you know, some head movement, keep his head out of the center. Little things like that, little subtle things a lot of people don't see. That Those those are the things that changes the course of the fight. The small subtleties. Colazzo throwing a straight left. That's sweet. Umbrella trying to back away from Colazzo. He looked over at the referee and Earl White did that. Mouthpiece, his mouthpiece fell out. So that is what transpired. And Corella looking to get a bit of a break. And Tony Chiratito is going to see if there is a time in a lapse in action. But Colazzo is not even that. Corella's just moving around the ring, trying not to get hit. Now he throws some shots. And also, fighting without your mouthpiece is dangerous, Caleb. Absolutely. There's a few, I've seen a few lapses, you know, in a half second break where maybe the ref could step in, but maybe he's looking for something more. That's where he should have stepped in right there. There's been a couple of those, it seems like. But. Under a minute left here in the sixth. Time! Time! Time, mouthpiece. Mouth now Tony Brian. Chiratito Sorry, over here. is going to rinse off the mouthpiece. Just the back here. And I don't know if this is better for Colazzo or for Perel. Let's go. Right. Colazzo is no ready to go. Mike, Mike no poaching. Over there, over there, Brian. Over there, over there. Time in. Box. And now Colazzo coming forward once again. Perel using that jab, but he isn't extending fully as much as he was in the first and second round. Ray, thank you so much. Marcus Castillo told us that he believes he's the toughest opponent you will have yet to face. Do you agree with that? And where are some areas you believe you can expose tonight? Well, uh, we'll see about that. And um, I don't think he's really the toughest opponent I'll face. And uh, we'll expose that soft body in here. Look real soft down there. You're currently ranked number two in the light heavyweight division. Where would an impressive performance put you? Well, honestly, there's nowhere to go but up from here. And uh, I'm focused on that. I'm looking at the world title list, but first, Lena Castillo tonight. All right, best of luck to you. Ray, back to you. Thank you very much, Jordan. Marcus Braun up next against Lennon Castillo. But right now, we have Luis Colazzo and Brian Perella, round number seven. This one's scheduled for 10. Ray Flores, Caleb Plant, ringside here in Long Island, New York at NYCB Live, home of the Nassau Veteran Memorial Coliseum. And Luis Colazzo just continuing to apply the pressure. It has been nonstop from the first round onward. Yes, coming out of the beginning of this round, after they settled whatever they were doing in the corner, uh, it's a nice right hand, right hook, uh, left hand by Varela. And he's starting to move his feet a little more. I've seen him slip some punches. I don't know if he's trying to rally or, you know, put it all on the line, but it's good to see him you know, doing something. Nice up for by Colazzo. Colazzo using his jab as well. And the item that really stands out 
too about Luis Galazzo is he's throwing a lot of power punches, but he always seems to find a way to mix in the jab as well, Caleb. Yeah, he's going back to the jab. He's starting with jabs and he's ending with jabs. Jabbing the wicked way in once he's getting there, he's letting off big combinations like you said, and then right after that, he's going right back to the jab. Uh, Perella's hands are low, his head is right in the center, he's not moving it, and um, that's why he's getting caught. Well, a few moments ago, Ryan Perella threw like three or four jabs, and Colazzo, in various different angles, parried them away and blocked them. So I think Colazzo has some underrated defense. Absolutely. You know, as long as he's been in the game, um, as many top uh, fighters as he's fought, you're going to learn little tricks, little subtleties, little things that uh, may not catch the eye of you know, every viewer. But, um, you know, the parry and the slip in his head a little bit this way, a little bit that way. Palazzo has got a little bit of everything. Well, Perella certainly seems to not be enjoying what he is getting out of Luis Colazzo. Colazzo is making him work and is putting him in uncomfortable positions. Nice right hook that connected by Luis Colazzo. Under a minute left here in round number seven. Surely Perella in his corner knows he's behind. And, you know, he, he's got to know he's behind, but he's still just moving his feet, being a little lackadaisical, uh, trying to slow the pace down. At this point, you know, he needs to be training his feet, pressing forward, trying to back Colazzo off of him, and trying to go out on the shield. You know, that's something I would like to see. Whether he gets his hand raised or not, you know, Warriors, they go on their shield, so. Final moments of round seven. Luis Colazzo again controlling the action against Brian Perella. That's the end of the seventh. You're giving him the, the real estate. That's what we said we FS. can't do. You got to take there that you back. see there in the corner of Brian your Perella. Would you like God to hear more sense of urgency out of the corner, Caleb? A little bit. You're in the middle of the to tie you up, which is smart. But uh, he doesn't want to tie up and slow the pace down too much because he's got to get his own work in. He's behind on the scorecards. Um, Colazzo looks strong. It, it doesn't show any sign. He doesn't show any signs of slowing down. So uh, he really needs to be putting things together these last two rounds for sure. Let's take a look at your unofficial scorecard. Caleb, how do you have it? I got Brian coming out in the first round. Um, you know, boxing well, dictating the pace slightly. Uh, using his jab, but everything after that has been all Colazzo. He's taking control, he's being the ring general, he's cutting off the ring, uh, he's throwing more combinations. Uh, he's more lively, he's more lively, he's boxing lively. Uh, Brian Perelli, he's look, looked a little bit uh, lackadaisical after the first round. Now the trainer, Michael Nowling, in Brian Perelli's corner said he to win these next three rounds. So it's some emergency. Big right hook. record up for grabs at the moment. 15 and 1, 13 knockouts, his only blemish loss at the hands of your Dennis Ukas. And now it looks like Colazzo is inviting Perella in. Uh, it seems like he may be taking a breather. He's done a lot of work this fight. Maybe trying to just, you know, get a quick breather. A little swelling on the, on the left eye, Colazzo as well. So one of those things that, okay, I'm willing to take off the round so that I can have enough left for this last two. Maybe, but if I was him, I wouldn't be taking off on the, uh, sitting on the road to get to bed. You know, a young guy like Ron Perella. He's going to take some time off. He needs to get on his bike, which means move his feet, uh, you know, faint, throw some jabs, and, and slow it down that way, recompose himself, and go back to work. If he's sitting on the ropes, he could wind up, you know, running into something big, and, you know, that, that could change the course of the fight. Well, as Colazzo was languishing on the ropes, he connected with the right hook. But, I will say that there is some swelling underneath the left eye of Luis Colazzo, compliments of Brian Perella. A straight left followed by a right to the body, and now Perella seems to be hurt. He's smiling, that's an indication he's a big straight left. Another one, Colazzo pulling it on as he goes right out of the Two big straight lefts. Perella trying to get him out of there. Look at Colazzo go for it. The 18 year veteran hammering away on the body. Oh, Perella! Big oh, straight left! Oh, 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 by Colossal, I stand corrected! 
Luis Calazo finding that button of youth. But he is a tie. PBC on FS2, Brian Perello was getting lit up by Luis Colazzo, and now the doctors are going to look at Brian Perello. Monaco now being the trainer of Perello took a long time to get out of the corner. And now is going right after Perello. I wonder if Perello still does not have all the faculties about him because Colazzo is going in to try to finish this fight. Yeah, he's going in the kill. Going in for the kill for sure, Brian. Um, if he doesn't knock him out, you know, go for broke and start th throwing some really big shots, um, you know, he, he's probably going to walk away with the loss today. He's, he's got to knock out Colossus for sure. Colossus sensing that the end might be near for Bryce Perella. And look at Colossus stepping himself in straight back. Colossus again attacking Bryce Perella. Seconds off the clock, but you have to give it to the toughness of Brian Perella. Many guys would have had their wills broken already, not Brian Perella. Another thing, Brian, um, he's moving his feet as he punches, which is good. You know, there's nothing wrong with moving around the ring, but at this point in the fight, he's got to know where he's at. He's got to be seasoned enough and smart enough to know where he's at in the fight and uh, set down. And start you know, landing some big heavy shots on Colazzo. Let's send it to the land Let's send it to the third member of our broadcast team. Here's Jordan Hardy. Ray, thank you. I'm over in the corner of Brian Corella, and I'm sitting next to some of the doctors in the commission here that aren't working this fight. They're, they're trying to tell the other doctors in Corella's corner, hey, you need to stop this. He does not need to continue. So we'll see what they'll do, but the other doctors are watching the side. They think this fight needs to be stopped, right? Thank you very much, Jordan. A stoop reporting by Jordan Hardy to give us that analysis from the doctors who are not working this fight. As Jordan was reporting, you know, getting her story out, Plaza landed a couple of really big body shots on the inside while he had Brian on the road. This is the kind of beating that you wonder well, if they will take years out of their father's career. I think they should stop it. I think they should step in. He's lost almost every round. Palazzo is looking strong. He's not looking tired. Um, Brian is. There's really no point in uh, letting it go on, you know. Well, Perella's just going into full-fledged survival mode. Yeah, he's in survival mode. Um, you know, it seems like he's been broke down. I think the ref should you know, call it quits. Alonzo trying to get that coveted stoppage. What a statement that would be after 18 months away from the ring to hug And he continues to have her away and come with a reckless abandon. Colazzo is having his way, but Brian Perella remains vertical. And that ends the ninth. Brian Perella has some soul searching to do. And let's take a look at some of the work from Luis Colazzo. Uh, yeah, melee and just throwing, uh, you know, big combinations. Not too much on it. Uh, every one of them trying to get the ref to step in and stop it. Wasn't able to do so, but definitely a great combination by Colazzo. Michael Nowling, they are in the corner of Brian Perella. You got Perella. it, Andy. You got to go for it. You got to go for it. We're down. All right, good. You got to go for it. You got to give me everything you got. Everything, where's the water? I need everything, B. It's what you live for, baby. We gotta go out there and get it. Let's go, baby, let's go. Come on. Let's go. Let's go, let's go. go for it. Michael not only telling Brian Perella you have to go for it. It's one thing to say it. It's another thing to go and execute it. Do you think that Brian Perella has the wherewithal to deal with someone who is as tough and pull out this miraculous victory? 
I mean, you never want to say never. Uh, every boxer has a puncher's chance, but, um, you know, he's lost a lot of steam on his punches. Like you said earlier, he's not turning his punches over all the way. Like I said earlier, he's moving his feet a lot when he punches, so he's not going to get super good leverage on that. Um, you know, it's hard to see that happening, but that's the great thing about boxing. Anything can happen. Big straight left. That clobbered Brian Perella. Colossal jumping up on the jab. thing about Galazzo as he's stepping to him he's, he, for the most part he's keeping his head out of the center either you know dipped over to the left dipping over to the right carrying the jab that way he's you know he doesn't get countered or you know he'll get hit with anything too big Perella with his back on the ropes this is bad and dangerous territory for him It's almost like he's too tough for his own good. Approaching the halfway mark of the tenth and final round. On the way out, just a second ago, Brian threw a you know small double left hand, but he was moving his feet as he does it. If he's going to want to change the course of this fight, he's going to have to plant his feet and start throwing some bombs. No punching, no punching. And chance of Louis echoing. champion and world title challenger in Luis Colazzo. And so far he has turned back time and is looking like he is 28 instead of being that of 38 and 37. Absolutely, he said he has a lot left to show the boxing world, a lot left in the gas tank, and he's definitely shown it tonight. Um, you know, Colazzo with that knockout over Sammy Vasquez, and then tonight over another young guy like Ron Perella, he's showing, you know, maybe he does go along here at the top. No matter who Luis Colazzo fights next, he is going to give them headaches because he has done exactly that, along with giving a beating to Brian Perella. 20 seconds remaining in the fight. A big right hook followed by a straight left. But the chin and the will of Brian Perella has been tested, and he is leaving lightly on his feet. What determination, but tonight it was Luis Colazzo who has his moment. They both show a sign of respect. And it's like the old guard talking to the new guard, but the old guard tonight likely will prevail. Welcome back, PBC on FS2. Luis Colazzo feeling like he is on his way to a W. Brian Prella tested. But let's take a look at the second half of the fight where Luis Colazzo, Caleb, really started to take over. Absolutely. In the latter part of the rounds, Colazzo really picked it up, put his throat on the gas, and was taking it to him. You know, Brown putting up a good effort, fighting back in spurts, but it wasn't enough to keep him off of him. Round nine was more of the same. Colazzo working his way in with the one two, letting off combinations, and Brian not answering back with much. Round 10. More of the same. Colazzo cutting out the ring, taking it to him. And, uh, you know, just outworked him. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we go to the scorecards. Here are your score totals. Judge at ringside, Alan Nace has the contest 95 95, a draw. Overruled by judges John Matfis, who has it 98 92 and Ken Ezzo, who has it 96-94 for your winner by majority decision, Luis Colazzo!